So I'm not even vaguely really aware of what y'all got into as a conversation. All right. It is, I'm scrolling back up. Wordy, Wordy can help me remember. But I was looking, well, it was a whole bunch of things. I, I mean, it started with like an eviction example. And then we got into, I said, well, you should do social organization as a mode of defending yourself from an eviction. And, and then uh, Wordy and, and Kat were talking about politics and negation. But I, I, I don't want to like misrepresent it if I, if I'm not describing the combo right. And then we talked about um, like not egoism, like versus social anarchism, but I just like, I just came in from like a very social, like Kropotkinite, I don't want to say old school, but like conquest of bread, like Kropotkinite position or whatever. And, and then got kind of exposed or it came up in conversation of like small R revolution revolution or like micro revolution and like kind of structural anarchism and then there was a whole bunch of yeah and then it, it just kind of spirals and it feels like yeah i didn't want people to like think i was a statist because i know i heard someone else say that i sounded like one but yeah no so i guess yeah i, I don't know I, i'd love to talk about it with wordy if um or cat if they want to jump uh, jump in on because I but I guess I, I just want a little like bridging the gap because I I don't know all of it about like kind of the old stuff and then the stuff like you kind of ascribe to the the structural anarchism the modern stuff the micro revolutionary kind of idea which one of them which one of them taught you the term micro revolution was it wordy um, I heard something, I, I think it might have been already. I was talking with a whole bunch of people. Good girl, Wordy. That's why I said um, <clears throat> Anyway, so for the purposes of resisting an eviction, micro-revolutionary act would not be the, the correct con, uh, contextualization for that. That That's a little more into the, the macro territory, but... um. That's neither here nor there. Where would you like me to start? What would you like to start with? Um, that's a good question. Where to start? I guess one thing is, and I, I, I'll just have to start somewhere. We were talking about, so this eviction example, and they were saying, or kind of saying like politics of negation, like resisting or, or kind of, doing resistance in the moment and then my response is well i don't want to act in the moment i want to have unions i want to have syndicates i want to have uh community cooperatives i want to have like all these sorts of things and so maybe i feel like we were agreeing but then it went over a little bit over my head like the the dis the difference between a i don't know big revolution or whatever or a series of micro revolutions if they both end up in like a horizontal society, you know, what's the big Okay, like, so what's the big agreement? All right. So the function of a micro revolutionary act is dual fold. Um first off, to understand a micro revolutionary act, you have to understand a micro authoritarianism or micro fascism. And to understand that, you have to f be familiar with the concept of sort of the um, neoliberal capitalist mindset has sort of been downloaded onto people, right? People um, self-replicate this style of authoritarianism even when they're not thinking about it because it is the normative value that they have seen their entire life, right? Yeah, that's like reciprocal... Um I don't know if it's a Marxist thing, but it's like a reciprocal um, reformation. Like the things you do change who you are and who you are affects what you do. Well, we're talking, uh, yes, but we're talking more about in this instance, sort of the inculcation, the, the, the pond that people are submerged in, right? If uh, oftentimes when people come through here and I, if I want to fuck with them, what I will do is, 
um, broach the subject of um, you can't even really conceptualize rank, ch- rank choice voting. Anarchists use consensus decision making in which a single individual has has a veto. Yeah. Right. And th- to even conceptualize such a system is difficult for somebody who's never participated in such a system and has only experienced the rank and file of our norm of the sort of median value of our society. Right. Oh. And so ultimately we're talking about that sort of lowest common denominator mindset that is the um, the the mediocrity that is um, the sort of neoliberal capitalist mindset. Now we could, you know, sort of call it, we could give it a capitalist structuralist mindset. We could call it the military dominated mindset. We could call it a capitalist owner slash, you know, knowledge, parti- uh, uh, knowledge partitioning mindset. There's a whole lot of identifiers depending on who you're, uh, what school of thought you belong to in this regard. Um, but ultimately, we're talking about that sort of just like the hierarchical capitalist mindset that the average person has in them, even if they're not happy with it, right? Yeah. There's, there's these predetermined biases that have been downloaded into your uh, – that have been installed – downloaded and installed onto your operating system by, by the very fact that you have – you are a part of, of a society – whose normative values are these, right? Yeah. So you see then the micro replication of those grand stratagems where normally you would look at something like, you know, the oligarchical processes of, oh, did we not? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it didn't kick off though. Um, hold on one sec. There we go. Um while um, while we would talk about like you know the oligarchical methodologies, regulatory capture, hierarchical capital ownership, private property, all these sorts of things that are these sort of we would f- oh we would firmly fit under macro or grand, right? These are the big problems of our yeah. society, right? But you see them replicated all the way down to a father behaving a specific way uh, at the dinner table, right? Where you see this this micro-macro, as above, so below sort of uh, replicated processes, right? So, at beat you to it. Um, So, what you see, uh, micro-revolutionary acts then are intended not only to subvert that in the moment and oftentimes while some of them can become permanent they are intended to be a conscious intentional counter to a normative uh normative dominant fascist value set that is opera uh, that is an operant value within your society now this could be something as simple as um uh, simple as um riding your bike to work one day a week right this isn't going to reverse everything this isn't going to be a part of the grand revolution but in that one day a week all of a sudden you're fighting back against the car centric society you're upending the petrochemical industry by consuming less from them. You're uh, you're enhancing your own uh, your own welfare, your your mind, your body, all of these sorts of things, right? And also, you're uh, um, you are defying the societal expectation that has been placed upon you, right? This yeah. is a micro revolutionary act. It's not going to create the revolution, but what it then does is gives the confidence of becoming something more than that normative social value set for that person. Because if in that moment they can tell that patriarchal figure that, hey, too bad, you didn't get here on time, we ate without you, sorry, or hey, you don't get to dictate, you don't get to dictate everything about this meal, or hey, 
the school uh, policy isn't actually that professor. Just because you want to be a dickhead doesn't mean anything. The cl- you know I'm going to come up uh, come when I can or how I do or I'm going to abide by the school policy or hey I have paid time off I'm using it whether you like it or not right or hey I'm going to ride my bike into work or hey I'm going to all of these sorts of micro revolutionary acts are intended to educate and instruct because the it is a recognition of the pop uh, is a is a base recognition that within the populace the things that you desire that you were talking about the grand stratagems are unachievable it is unrealistic to talk about a revolution in a modern context at this time yeah and i've been starting to um well, I said Kropotkin, I like, well, it's like, you know, and calm, right? But uh, you mentioned Bellamare, I guess, on an earlier stream and like structural anarchism. Uh, and, Mich- I, like, Michelle did. Through, and I look through, I guess, sorry to say, but I kind of skipped to the end because it's like very theory dense. And <laughs> I'm reading some more of like the decentralized mm-hmm. uh, kind of nature of how, you know, you can't perfectly eradicate the previous society every society will always have strains of the last society and you'll never be able to just just say no to well capitalism. it's because of the functional nature of a human being it is the recognition yeah. of the of uh, the fundamental nature of how we operate as a biological entity and to take that into account and provide for it rather than take advantage of it which in the dreed capitalist driven system um, that uh, it actually does, right? But until you teach a critical mass of people, nothing matters, right? But there's no teaching a critical mass of people th- these techniques, these methodologies, these mindsets in a society that is as inculcated and uh, d- misinformed, disinformed, purposefully miseducated, purposefully uneducated as as we no and problem. the global society are. That's just an unachievable goal, right? It's, yeah. unre- it's unrealistic to even talk about it. That's why oftentimes, um, yes, red, <laughs> Bell American, uh, <laughs> yeah. like trying to climb a cliff face. Um, I've, I've actually, I've sent him DMs before, um, years ago now, just be like, okay, can you clarify this for me? <laughs> because he, he, he purposefully, uh, the, okay. the only person I've ever seen do this before was, uh, Terrence McKenna who wrote intentionally academically obtuse uh, in obtuse manners. So to create a impermeable opaque thing that you have to work at to to actually get through that i am going to do the opposite rather than simplify this or at least you know make this as achievable as possible so most can i'm going to put up as many barriers as possible right and he's got his logic to it um you know whether to that but yeah whether whether you agree or disagree <clears throat> he did it he yeah he achieved his goal um but um so like so they serve two purposes one the micro revolution serves to empower the individual and two it's to provide the 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 soil for which then social action can take place. And now when I say social action, this is the problem with what we see as mo- for most collectivists is that they are obsessed with this, what I constantly refer to as a meta narrative. It is this grand meta narrative that arguably we can blame the French for, or at least the rest of the world's obsession with the French on this one, right? Um, that they want it to look a very specific way. And that world is dead. It's been dead for hundreds of years. What was that? You cut in and out. Yeah, Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, 
it doesn't seem to look that way anymore. Obviously, when you read the books and you read about the Paris Commune, and you read no. about it's like, yeah, you know, that's very 19th century, but that's just not really doable anymore. Like you're not going to raid the Bastille and uh-huh. and you know, yeah. you know, go over the Palisades and declare yourself the new aristocracy as the free. Like it just doesn't work. No. So <laughs> but it's, this I, is where right? modern anarchism takes up the takes up the flag is because anarchism is alive and well within the individuals. Because rather than this, uh, because anarchism has a strain of individuality to it that is tempered against a collective methodology, Mm -hmm. right? It is the recognition that only through the empowerment of the individual can the collective thrive. Anarchists get this yeah. because we have the egoists, because we have the individualists, because we have that crew within our ranks, because, as Emma said, it's a network of ideas and we much prefer it that way, right? Because it isn't this singular monolithic set of modalities. Un- like, Marx. like Marxism, Leninism, like communism in, it, in its entirety. <laughs> Right, take any of your strains of it. Doesn't matter. It, it, the only way to achieve that goal, if you want that goal, is through anarchism. You're not going to get there by doing the. I want a stateless, classless society. How are you going to get there by instituting classes and empowering the state? Are you yeah, just, are you for, fucking stupid? Right. I, how did anyone believe that? I want to heal my bullet wound. How are you going to heal your bullet wound? I'm going to shoot myself again. Right? Like, that's, that's, the, that's the logic behind it. That is the unassailable logic behind it. To defeat centralizing authoritarianism, we shall empower centralized authoritarians. Yeah. Right? And so— I, I can't believe I used to—like, I, I kind of used to be in that sphere until I obviously moved over, I guess you would say— further left further further to obviously the anarchist camp like used to be uh dem socialist or whatever and then i was like oh let me read a little bit of marx and oh oh, lenin oh oh, oh." and then i'm like oh wait a minute these guys are mass killers never mind so it's through those uh those um micro revolutionary acts that you begin to create a group that is then able to conceptualize the next step. Now, some people need it, some people don't. But arguably, the micro-revolutionary act is for your normie. That's who it's for. It is, it is intended to show someone that they aren't powerless, that they aren't this, okay. this absolutely emasculated entity that in fact even even if in the smallest of ways you can defy the power base you're still defying a globe spanning multi-trillion dollar power system power structure right this thing spans the globe it has entire armies at its disposal it wields the power that emperors of old would have done anything for and yet in your own small way in your own home or on your own way to work you can completely completely upend that system and it takes only a choice right to show that to somebody is empowering it's giving them back the power that they have uh, that they have felt has was taken from them and creates that marginalized, alienated mentality within people. You see it most often with conspiracy theorists, actually. There's nothing you can possibly do to change anything because the fucking planners and the, the think tanks and all that sort of thing, they're completely disempowered. They're just cucked as anybody in our society. Yeah. yeah. But once you start to get that, then you move on to the next step, which is the make sandwiches step. Mm -hmm. And this is what more often than not, when I have a conversation with an anarchist in our channel who comes on, I think, um, 
who was the last one? Uh, Dave, Dave the Barbarian. He, um, he up in Canada, and I mean, he had the theory. He had all. He had everything he needed. I saw that combo, yeah. But he just needed to go make sandwiches. That's it. Like that's that's the next step. Is you're not going to organize the national revolution. No one is. That's not how it works. The state and the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, just the entire complex is uniquely organized to counter that type of activity. That's not what the revolution will look like. It's just not the form it will take. In a modern context, given the NSA, given the militarization of police forces, given homeowners associations and interest rates and, 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 and the, the panopticon umbrella has been constructed and we need to admit that to ourselves and understand what that means. It doesn't mean we're powerless. It doesn't mean we can't enact change. It just means that the form that it will take is not the form that we read in the books. Yeah, not the Spanish Civil War. That's not really it's doable. It's unachievable. It's completely unrealistic. But what it does look like is, is dual power structure construction. Right, it the looks, hierarchical power and the horizontal power. It looks like COVID taught a bunch of lessons. Yeah. Oh shit! Food's difficult to get. Oh shit! Water can just be like turned off if you don't pay your bill. Oh, shit. Food prices are like doubling and tripling now this year. Oh, shit. Internet services just keep going up in cost. Oh, shit. Okay. So what does it look like? It looks like you and your roommates. It looks like you and your neighbors. It looks like you and your cul-de-sac. It looks like you and your block. It looks like you and your apartment building. All of a sudden, hey, I got a spare room. Why don't we just like stack extra like bottles of water for the next time like the shitty like city water goes out on us. That way we don't have to like worry about it. Or hey, here's an idea. Why don't we just like filter some extra water on the regular and stockpile it and then we'll have it for the next time. And like, you know, you, you can get in on this. We can get on in this. Or hey, how about like, you know, I buy the internet, you pay for the whatever st service or hey. Let's pool our money and like get a NAS server going and I'll set it up wirelessly and we can just like share media in a perfectly legal fashion, I assure you, Twitch. Oh, uh, yes. Right? Like how about how about hey, like why don't we like pool our money and go buy like some bulk food and just do food prep between us uh, like all the neighbors on this floor? Right? How about childcare is expensive and we all coordinate our days off and we just figure out how to like group raise these kids rather than put money out to some capitalist child raising expenditure? Right? Yeah. All That's of these, easy. all of these dual power structures then provide you breathing room. Right? They provide you the breathing room financially and psychically. Right, and they just like better, like just you know, in a contained way. Like it makes it makes your own life better. Yeah, and so whether you're doing community gardening, whether you're sharing internet, whether you're sharing child rearing, whether you're sharing this, that, or the other thing, right? Then it gives you breathing room, and with that breathing room, you collectively then can figure out the next step. You can then take that surplus value that would have been extracted by the capitalist class and repurpose it for something that may give you guys even more breathing room and you bootstrap that process. But all of that hinges upon a single axiom. You have to empower the individual because there is no system of just 
a conglomerate. Systems are made of nodes on a network. It's all about that distributed topology. And while the system can absorb an, an, imp an impact if two or three nodes go down, if you remove all of them, there is no such thing as that system anymore. That system is comprised of Dave and Bill and Karen and Sally and Jim and Taylor and, and, and. Those are people. Yeah, whoever. That make up that collective. And so this is where collectivism and a lot of the social anarchists get a little lost in the sauce. Is that they fail to remember what builds that system is the empowerment of the individual. And that has to take into account all sorts of things up to and including their own egos. You have to speak to people where they are. You have to speak to their needs. This is where Marx actually does. You material, you know, materialism understands like you got to give them what they fucking need to a certain extent. Right. <laughs> Like you, this is just yeah. fundamental fucking, you know, they get credit as usual amongst leftists, but this is just a fundamental reality of life is that like, okay, family A may not need the same thing as family B and family A, person A, person B, person C don't all have the same needs and wants either. And so you have to drill down through those groups into the individual level. And only the best way to do that is to empower those individuals so that they can address them themselves. And I'm not saying some sort of like conservative, like pull yourself yeah. up by your own bootstrap sort of thing, but so that right. they can, yeah. so that they're empowered to speak for themselves so that they can say, this is what I want and need. But when they've been beaten down by a system that is not only macro fascist, but also micro fascist, that even their boss, their spouse, yeah, their like your own old dictator, everybody just has just a, a plethora of micro dictators, micro fascists in their life from from maybe even the cashier that at, at the store who's like, you know, giving them shit because that's what they've been inculcated in, right? And so the sort of Bellamarian process of micro-revolutionary acts is about that. It's about teaching and empowering that individual that even though they feel like they have been completely disempowered, even though they are up against a system of authority that is near infinite in its complexity— they can still upend that entire system with a simple change of their mind. And yeah. uh, or at least they can upend the system within their own mind and their own life, but maybe not the whole thing. And so it's that sort of process that it, this is why somebody like Kat, who is a card carrying egoist, um, <laughs> Yeah. Again, never free base Sterner, but I I definitely say everybody should know some Sterner. So people should definitely have a little bit of Sterner in them. I'm he, starting to to read a little more Sterner and actually like Sterner because he's he's real he's pragmatic and realistic. He's a sociopath, but he's also realistic in it. Right? It is <laughs> fundamental to how reality is because we. Anybody who does a fair analysis of the world understands that the state is founded upon a monopolization of violence. What does that yeah. mean? That means the only thing holding that shit together is the willingness to actually do the act. That's it. Do you own that chair? Not if I don't want you to. If I if if I'm willing to do what it takes to take that chair from you, then I own that chair. Yeah. And Roth property relations. It that's 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 how it works. Like it's not how it should work, <laughs> but that is how it works in reality. 
is if I roll through your territory with a superior military and kill all of your people and take your shit, who owns your shit? Me. You do. Right? Like, that's how it works at a micro or a macro level. And Sterner was one of the few to actually write it down and be like, it's true. You may not like it. You may hate it. But it's the reality of the situation. Might makes right. And so it's through those sorts of the knowledge of Sterner, right, that I, 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 people should have that. And it's through the individualist anarchists that are focused on the empowerment of the, the node of the system that are like, hey, it all starts there, right? It, and, and it does, even if you believe in like it takes a it takes a village sort of mentality that like ultimately no man is an island, right? But if that collective ignores one individual, congratulations. It only takes a single malignant cell to create a tumor. Right? Like that it doesn't take much. And so the recognition that the all of the collective actions, all of the societal ability stems from individualism, stems from that single individual. And then through the empowerment of the individuals comes the power of that collective. The more people you have on the picket line makes the picket line stronger. If you neglect yep. your members, the picket line collapses, right? And so it is through the balance. Oh, you cut out again. What was that? But that's why consensus is so important. Yes. It's why it's a, yeah, you want a useful tool, but two also in terribly important. Um, so... Yeah, that's sort of the like the the broad strokes of like a, a modernist, post leftist, Bellamarian. Uh, but also at this point, we can also say like there's a fair amount of me in there as well. I've been at this long enough that I can just I can say like, look, I manipulated it a little bit on the way. Um, and so like that's why any particular so just modern anarchist frankly i <laughs> i'm the very image of a modern anarchist um anyway um yeah um it is that's where it comes from is like there is no grand revolution coming it doesn't not it yeah i mean maybe like maybe if we think about mm. the past you know there are times where it was really close but you know i mean it just it just never it just didn't happen and and the the tor and and it, it'll so be a tonal change. It won't even be like, because this is why my point about the meta narrative that people are obsessed with, they see it as these like grand moments and they never see the like actual contextualization of the historical acts that lead up to those grand moments that they become obsessed with that, you know, it, it sort of like the argument that I make and others make that there is no such thing as world war one and two. That those are just sort of demarcations that we have artificially placed upon millions and millions of events that led up to and culminated in and then led into and knock-on effect caused and then that leads into – we've just sort of put up these artificial barriers like we do with gender or sexuality or status or lines on a map. We just created an artificial construct for it. Yeah, they're not like actually real. And so like, yeah. And so like the revolution is arguably always been happening, will always continue to happen because I think it was pointed out and I'll point it out once more uh, in this conversation that communism didn't survive Marx, right? Like it, it, 
it was immediately like collapsed in under its own ideals sort of situation, right? Um, anarchism is alive and well because it understood what it took to survive. If you need a committee for your thing to exist, then it will never survive because the FBI can in- immediately just infiltrate that. Looking at you, Communist Party of U- United States of America. Done. Right? Like, it, it is just how that works. But anarchism works at this individualist level and then creates affinity groups spanning out from it. And because you can have anarchistically, uh, anarchistically driven analysis and modes of operation at the individual level, it will probably never die because it predates capitalism. It predates the state. It predates all of this. And it has managed to continue and it manages to exist in various iterances throughout the world. Trumbleplex outside of Detroit um, managed to survive the collapse of Detroit. They have residences. They have their own library and art space and event space. And they've been successfully interfacing with neoliberal hyper-capitalism for going on 30 years. Right. And they just, they just keep chugging along doing their thing because once you get a version of it and as long as you don't attract the ire of the state by figuring out where those lines are and how the game is being played and you're just like, okay, so fucking don't try some armed insurrection shit, right? And you don't, don't fucking stockpile machine guns and anti-aircraft guns and shit like that. Don't fucking start, you know, mailing bombs to everybody. Don't fucking start it, you know, oh, we're going to start a, 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 a black market drug ring here, right? Figure out the game. Keep on the other side of the line and just keep going because there's really nothing they can do. Because dual power structures are highly effective once you understand how they work and how to operate them and you, you get them established and it's amazing what, uh, what can be accomplished when you feed and house people. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I don't speak for the Greeks or the, uh, well, let's see, the Greeks, the Spanish, uh, the Italians, the Chileans, the Argentinians. Yeah. Um... Yeah, pretty much. Or or the the last remaining few Russian anarchists. Um, yeah. Or you I could, could uh, just for a minute, but you know, go ahead and talk to chat. Um n- no, it is not uh red wine, Bravo. It is uh carbonated tea wizard tea. Mm. So, yeah, anyway. If you need committee every five seconds, your org will not survive. Um it is, it's quite delicious. Um, so, but a boom. All right. Let me, I'm just scrolling. I'm just scrolling chat. Um, Has been. I'm high on ketamine. Sterner. Love it. Still probably my favorite meme. I'm high on ketamine. Uh, God, it's a great meme. Let's see. Um, oh, God. Red posted a excerpt from Bellamare. Yep. Fuck it. Dude, Bellamare loves his hyphens, Red. He loves his hyphens. There we go. I'm back. Well, um, and let's see. Did I see um let's see if he's still here? Uh X XZX Raptor, if you're still here, welcome. Um all right. So I got another I got I got like not really a question, but it, I don't know. It's just weird because it's like 
from the egoist perspective, I hear about like Stern even says the union of egoists. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I guess maybe from more my perspective, you hear about the commune or the commune of communes be however big, however small you want. And it just, it feels kind of like we're talking about the same thing or like we're describing the same thing, but just using like different language because I, I 100% believe in the empowerment of the individual, but I just know that individuals like working together in some sort of like a syndicate for anarcho syndicalism or a commune for communists, uh, anarcho communists or whatever. It, like it just feels like it kind of ends up doing the same thing if you take them both to like their conclusions. I mean, yes. Yes. It's. It's the motivation that differs. If I if I had to point to one thing that like why are you doing this? What place does this come from? Right? The egoists yeah. tell themselves and I love you cat, but fMRI studies have disproven this. The uh the egoists come from a position of I'm pleasing my own self. That's it. Now working with you goes to further my goal. Yeah. Right? Like it's about me. All of it is ultimately about me. Even if I want to help you, that's about me. Uh, I don't. Uh. Again, I'm speaking as an egoist here. Yeah. Now, modern fMRI studies have actually shown that there is a difference within the activity of the brain between an altruistic act and a self-serving act. Um, they do actually come from different places. But the philosophy of egoism is that even if you are doing something altruistically, it is because that pleases you. It gives you the dopamine. It gives you the whatever you're looking for. Right. Whether that is like, OK, because you're in a better place, I rationally think that, well, my community will be better. That's le one less person that could be difficult to that could be looking to destroy what we're building here. That will be net blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. Right. Ultimately, for an egoist, it comes back to self. Yeah. Whereas a communalist is very much selfless in their regard whether for the to the detriment of the individual, right? These are the two ends of the spectrum, right? That it's like, look, it is about society. You do need to get over yourself and compromise, and you do need to like give up certain things, and you do need to this, that, and the other. Ultimately, we are a social species, and it is about uh, it is about the group. It is about the survival of the group. It isn't yeah. about any one individual. Yeah, I mean, I think it's both. I mean, right? That I think it has to be. It has to be definitely both because I mean, you know, I value consensus and I value mutual aid. So I don't want, you know, people don't deserve to have ration cards where some organized structure gives them a ration card of what they need, quote unquote. No, they deserve to have some library economy idea where they can go in and take what they need for their own needs. They don't deserve to be told what their needs are. Narrator, you have completely missed the point then. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I had just hate to you, there's just no other way to really put that. There are absolutely hardcore, we are talking about the extremes of the spectrum. And there very much are forms of the communalistic n nature that disregard the individual. There are both of those, yeah. Yes. We are talking about both ends of the spectrum, the hard limits of either side. For the purposes of exploring what Ghosty was asking, like, aren't ultimately, don't we all end up at sort of the same place? And I would say to that point, no, because the intentions 
that you bring into the construction of that space will matter. Now, I don't want to sound woo-woo fucking like, you know, oh, yeah. center your intent. But the intent to which you desire to empower or disempower, to recognize or not recognize, matters to the tonality of the structure you are building. Right? There's a reason that you empower those individuals. There's it's, a, it's means. Yeah. Kind of. Well, yes, like it, it very much matters. And so if you are going into it with a hardcore selfish perspective, the, as Bill Maire talks about that capitalist mindset that is unquashable, right? That, that cannot be, we cannot be rid of as humans because it lives within us just as every single human is a killer right it just takes the correct set of pressures to be applied that's it maybe it's self defense maybe it's defense of child maybe it's defense of an idea it just the right correct set of pressures every human being is a saint and a sinner right it's the recognition of that that if you go in with that intention, that ultimately the corruption will be there from the start. And you, yeah. you need to temper that in both directions because the individual matters and the collective matters, right? And it's through, it's understanding the sort of order of operations and understanding where it can possibly fall down that I think that, like, look, you necessity have to empower those individuals. But at the same time as you are empowering them, you can be reiterating the, the social aspects of it. You can be showing them that, hey, this works. It works for you. And by extension, it's working for all of us because it works for you, because we take you into account, because we listen to you. This shit yeah. works. That's the only that's the only way it would work. Because everything else, because if you go to the extremes, I mean you'll have like just kind of like individualist like anthem style like living in the woods. And then if you go to the other side, you'll have like I don't know, I it seems like you would just have like a vanguard develop and ruin the whole thing because they were so unfocused on the individual that they decided to have a central committee or something and it, the whole thing just blows down mm -hmm. or yeah. or you start to see hyper hyper uniformity yeah. emerge when the, the sort of the the sort of uh the beacon the 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 defining mark the trail post the signifier that i look for is when you start to see that faltering of artistic individuality. That's yeah, well, easy. To, it's easy to see. Right? Like like North Korean paintings of like the same glorious fucking and, you know whatever like whatever like and what crazy. happens when somebody has a different idea? I want to paint something else. It's just not allowed. Exactly. Oh, well, we that has to go through committee. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, no, it just it gets denounced or it has to go through a committee or the the dictator, you know, dis is displeased with you or whatever. Yeah. Like Shostakovich. Or the like ruling stuff. party. Right. Um, so ultimately, it is that balance. It is it is teaching that balance. And but it's also embracing that balance and the recognition that and this is this is why it has to be multifaceted and there's an argument to be made that like especially within leftist spaces and we've hammered this before right that you see it oftentimes the exemplar that i would use is the 10 year old tweet syndrome yeah do we believe in restorative justice or not? That's my question yep. to a lot of leftists. Do we believe in it or not? Because if we do, 
then it's a matter of having a conversation with somebody and being like, okay, what was like, what was the intent here? Like, what did you mean? Was it a joke? Was it just a shitty joke? Like, do you understand why it was a shitty joke? Right. Do you actually believe this? Like, I don't give a shit what you say. I honestly don't. I give no shits about what anybody says. What I care about is what they mean by what they say. Right. And without that degree of nuance and understanding that people change, that even if they meant the horrible, horrible thing that we are all dreading, do they do they believe that now? Do they feel that way now? Yeah. Can they be changed? Is this a position that they're willing to discuss? Can we have this conversation? And if like if all of those sorts of fall into that territory of and but I see it more often, honestly, I see it more often on the left than the right. But the right does it just as like as much. They're just not in parody. That's all. Like you see it with Christian nut jobs. They're constantly trying to cancel shit, right? It, yeah, it's the same. Like it's, they say it's, if I had to make a statement, I'd say on the left, there's a lot more individualist level of canceling. People themselves are like, fuck that person. I don't want to ever hear from them again. On the right, they're just group think cancel. It's like, it's like the satanic panic. Yeah. Like, they're they're like, very oh, the collect the, children. the collective cancels you. Whereas on the left, it's just a whole bunch of people that are like, get fucked. <laughs> right? Either way, do we be- it uh, on their side it's consistent. It's consistent. Right? They they argue for that oh. shit all the time. Whereas on the left, we're we're hammering that drama about how prison shouldn't exist and restorative and, re, and punitive justice, you know, retributive justice. Retributive justice is not the way to go, and that restorative justice is the only you know ethical, logical conclusion. Oh, yep, nope. He said the bad word. Fuck that guy. Right? Yeah. We don't ever want to hear from him again. Right? It's like, are you? Really? Right? And so it, it has to come from that sort of nuanced place as we do these things. Right? And this is this is much further down the line than making sandwiches. This is this is this is a part of that process. It's part of that continuum. We're 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 like, you know how when they talk about like stages of civilization and we're not even like a class one civilization yet, we're like a point eight two or some shit like that, yeah. right? We're we're at like the point eight two stage. We're 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 not even realistically to the make sandwiches stage yet. We're we're still in the teach people that they aren't completely fucking just disempowered and that they can't do anything and that there there are that there are options to their thought processes to their actions they can start to scrape this power back right in their personal lives in their communal lives they can do things right they can fight back we're still in that stage (laughs) yeah it's like I, I, I've been thinking about, like, the meaning of, like, quote-unquote civilization or whatever. And the reality is I, I don't even think we're not really there yet because civilization is when people have rights and they're respected and they have a voice and blah, blah, blah. You know, the Roman Empire isn't a civilization because they abused people and enslaved people and crucified them. And it's like, and everything else since, you know, things like that haven't been civilization because it's about how they treat people and what rights people have. And so like, yeah, we're, we're still like, and that's why, that's why I, I am reticent to actually most conversations I have with most like leftists, anarchists, like I don't, I won't go that far into the conversation because ultimately it doesn't do anything. There's no point to it. When people are worried about that stage of things, they get analysis paralysis. And they don't do the work. What yeah. you what you need to be doing is connecting with your your affinity groups. You need to be forming those affinity groups, right? Like that that that's step one. You need to go whatever your affinity. You may hate your neighbors. Your neighbors may be you know irreparable boomer Fox News addicts, right? Can't do much about that. Fuck it, right? 
but what do I have? Right. Yeah. I do have friends. Okay. We can't, whatever, right. Form those affinity groups and start working them and empowering them. And and through that empower each other and take the next step and the next step and the next step, because ultimately there's not going to be some national movement. Neoliberal capitalism won on a global scale. They took Russia, they took China, they took it, they took India, they took it all, man. They won. Fucking sucks. <laughs> like that's that's like the first first step to like actually like recognizing uh, to to building a, a insurrection of sorts is to recognize the capacity of your opponents. You cannot you cannot underestimate your opponent. That is just a horrific mistake to make. And the reality of the situation is this shit won. They took the globe. It's a global, uh, global scale issue. It's it, Vietnamese villi- like fisher villages are subject to these forces now, right? <laughs> that's just, just yeah. that's the reality of the situation. So to deal with it, we need to first accept what the reality of that situation is and then understand what the appropriate methodologies for engaging in action are. And hilariously enough, um, anarchism is suited for that. Like, it because of how it works. It I think do- that makes sense. Like, that, I don't think it's hilarious. Like, it makes sense. Well, I... It, I find it hilarious because it's, it's, I take great pleasure in being an anarchist because ultimately we've, we've always been on the right side of history. It's pretty awesome being right all the time. It is, it is, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty funny to just be over and over and be like, dude, it's not that difficult. Like you just guys got to pay attention. Who's, who's the, who's being the douchebag in the room. That's probably your problem. It's not that complicated. It's the Maya Angelou rule of like, if somebody tells you who they are, believe them. They show up in black uniforms, head to toe with, with machine guns and kick people, kick like grandmothers out onto the street. You think those are the good guys? (laughs) Pay attention. That's, that, that's the baddie right there. That's the baddie. Right? Like, dude, it's fucking all the bank foreclosed on a farmer. Wait, the dude that grows our food, they kicked him out? Why? No, but the property relations, no. Exactly. Like, it's like, okay, well, the bank's fucking not the good guy either. Like, it's not that complicated. The lens of analysis, the tools that anarchists have at their disposal lend themselves so readily to every situation. And, like, even in the face of a global defeat like that, communism falls, right? Even Maoist China, here, come, here comes Deng. Dengism is coming in, right? Even fucking Russia, here comes Pizza Hut, baby. Right? Yes, just, like, just capitalism. Yeah. I, I hate hearing people say communist China. I'm like, they're like, it's like, they have McDonald's, they have Coke, they have jeans. That It's like, they're, they're... So fuck. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Like, and they never were, by the way. Yeah. They were, never were a stateless class of society. And, it's just fucking. And so, yeah. like, under having those tools of analysis, having that mode of affinity groups and individualism mixed with uh, with this social nature, understanding these uh, these intersectional uh, uh, methodologies, right, just lends itself to. Being able to, even in the face of overwhelming defeat, go, I still know how to do this. Just, even, even with them peering down at us with, if I'm broadcasting this, right? The NSA is a real thing. I'm on a major streaming platform just talking about this. Dude, you could just undermine yeah, all sorts of stuff. Dude, collectively, you can get a bunch of friends together, buy a piece of property, start growing your own food. Yeah, it's a bunch of fucking work, but everything's a bunch of fucking work, including grinding at that corporate bullshit hellhole. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the same. Right? Like, ultimately, like, you can absolutely just create dual power structures. Ooh. I see. So, 
So yes to all of that, but I, I saw Kat posted something. So all so with all this clarification in mind, I'm now curious how at Ghost feels about the initial wait. Is that someone else in chat or is that me? No, that's you. That's they're probably yeah, okay. Um yeah, so my position before, that was like the first thing was like the self defense state with with um we could go back to the eviction example, but basically I was just saying for you could you could take different forms of self defense for any situation, but I was just saying you should go with whatever seems the most like the most feasible, the most appropriate, especially on a collective scale. So like if someone tries to like if someone tries to murder someone, you're obviously allowed to fight back with violence because that's called self defense and that's allowed. But if there's like I don't know like like if someone's getting evicted or mass evictions like people can't afford the rent and they lose it to covid and whatever i was saying you know collective action is the way to fight back against that that you can have you can have rent strikes you can have massive protests you can do all these things but like the individual person like coming out and like fighting you know they're trying to be evicted by police and they're like trying to fight them and stuff and it's like it's like you know that's just not i think I, the way to I, phrase that would be the more effective means. Yeah. It's not, yeah, I guess, it's not impossible, effective. but it's more effective when the entire community gathers outside your house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, things like that, like a fusing new, oh my God, there's some term, like there's like de arrests and like de evictions or whatever. So it's. Um, okay. So cat quoted, I'd say any, 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 I don't know, it's going to be a typo. Um, the directly lim uh, the, anything that directly limits your bodily autonomy, harms your being, or takes away your means of surviving is an act of violence. I don't, I won't say violence against the state is strictly the means of self-defense against the state, but that social revolution against the state, which might include violence, would be the means of self-defense. Talking about this one, says Cap. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, when I'm thinking about that, it's like, and then word, and then wordy's also responding, but it, but it's like if, it's like okay, if you're trying to like self defense yourself from being evicted by police or whatever, instead of taking collective action, you just do it individually. They just they're just gonna beat you up and then take you out of your house anyways. It feels like, like why would you do the thing that that's less likely to work? Like why would that count? Like it's ma like it's larger. I'm not gonna say massive because not like you know big revolution, big R, you know this impossible revolution. But like it takes community action. It takes larger organized action. Like it, it's just it's just not gonna work. Like facts, you're on one tonight, aren't you? Like like with this eviction analogy. Um, narrator. Um. I saw that too. Narrator. Um, I will respond to that devil's advocate for you then. Um, I'll read it for people. People point to the West opposition to China as evidence that it's building an alternative to neoliberal capitalism. Does this indicate that China ca uh, can be a threat to the capitalist order? Um, no, fundamentally, no. Um, okay, so here's, here's, here's the problem, right? Wordy. Um. That's not what he's saying, Wordy. That's a bad faith take. Even I, even I is fucking come on. That's that's absolutely not what he's saying. Yeah, I, I see. Like they they did. I, I I don't know if it's dialectic. I I don't know, but they kept asking questions like that, and it just feel like they were missing the mark of what I of what I was saying. Like you can fight back, but it's just not going to work because they're just going to continue to to like beat you up or whatever. What I'm saying is what you should do is you should organize on a larger level so you can f even fight no. back against these problems before they directly affect you. Um, okay, so narrator. Fundamentally due to the vanguardistic centralizing authoritarian means uh, by which uh, China was organized around, and Russia, by the way, this applies to both of them, what you ultimately see is an importation of um, bourgeois behavior. And that bourgeois okay. behavior is inevitably um, mo uh, is inevitably mocked, uh, not mocked, uh, modeled uh, down to a, a separate groups. They see it, they want it, they desire it. 
Um, and eventually somebody's going to be willing to give it to them at a price, at a price. And that's how the corruption just sort of stems down. Capitalism is uniquely positioned to spider web its way into all those crevices. That's what capitalism does is it models itself all the way down to the individual. So it's, it's very capable of just infiltrating all those sectors. They functionally had the same desires that human beings have for power, for a wealth, for material goods. And ultimately, they didn't eliminate it or embrace it on a mass scale. What they did was isolate it to an elite class of people that were still visible to the public. Meanwhile, the public was desiring something. I mean, arguably, that's why I said it earlier, but arguably, like, the, the, the crack in the wall of China, uh, not of China, of Russia, was Pizza Hut. It is, it's a joke, but it's true. All it really took to take Russia fully away from the old Soviet ways was to give them shitty pan pizza. It, it, it wasn't that complicated for capitalism to take them. The Be commodity uh, fetishism. Because ultimately they were already desiring it. There was already a black market. And don't forget Coca-Cola. It was Pepsi. Uh, it was Pepsi. Um, also Pepsi and blue jeans. Easy. Yeah. Like there was already a black market for these goods. They already wanted them. There was already a demand. Right. And without addressing that demand, their system was just attempt attempting to deny it. A fundamental human desire was being denied. And so capitalism just stands over here waving a pair of fucking blue jeans and a, and a pan pizza with a side of fucking Pepsi. And they're like, we're in. Sold. That's how fucked up those, those, those methodologies are. It's not that they're like necessary. The very nature of like the sort of Western powers, it, it's all statist, statism is by nature competitive. If you're going to draw a border and demarcate some space from some other space, then you're going to immediately start comparing those spaces. That's just human nature, right? And so it's by nature competitive. It's So ultimately, yeah, they were going to compete, but they weren't even, dude, this is NBA playing. This is like the dream team playing at the Olympics type stuff. It's like you guys won't even. Oh, <laughs> somebody's getting timed out. Oh yeah, it's that dumbass. Um, and it should pop like within yeah twenty seconds. Um, okay. <laughs> Obo's literally the guy with dementia yelling on the bus. Um, there's an example of fucking community participation that I try and model dire directly into the community. They have the power of timeout and they have the power of untiming out. There is absolute consensus within that system. If anybody wants to like bring that moron back, they can bring that moron back. Which, by the way, uh, Lilith Hobo, just so you know from the great beyond, um, you can be untimed out. If you don't get untimed out, probably indicative of something, of how the people feel about you. Just putting that out there. <clears throat> Um, yeah. So there was there was one more. Um, I guess one thing I saw Wordy said again, just another response. Like, if you don't have those social organized tools at your disposal, like, what wh what do you do? And I was like, it's like, I don't know. I mean, because you, you, you just like it's just not like if you're getting evicted from your home and then you try to fight them all off, they're all gonna just gang up on you and beat you up. And so the whole point would have been to have an organization to empower that individual so that they don't just get, you know, completely ganged up on by police who will gang up on them. But if you're organized collectively, 
then as an individual, you actually do have some more autonomy and you can make more change in the world by working with a group. Uh, narrator, um, that's consi- those points are earned just by being present in community and it, that we consider that the level of uh, somebody in good standing. That's that's those those many thousands points. We consider that somebody is just a member of, in good standing. And there is no barrier to entry other than be here and participate, which is the barrier to entry for every community or society. Be be here and participate. Yeah, that's fair. That's it. That's the barrier to entry. You accumulate them by being here and participating, which is just classified as a member in good standing. That's it. So any member in good standing within the community could time you out or untime you out. Simple as that. Um, yeah. So, so Wordy's still like... Uh, wordy. Okay. Wordy. The world isn't perfect. And it, look... Fi- I'm going to answer for you, Ghosty. If, if, correct me okay. if correct me if you need to, right? Okay. Wordy. Yeah. Feel Oof, free. No. Feel free to fight him. Probably not going to work, but feel That's free. What I've been saying. Like, what? What more do you want? What more do you want? Like, either build those tools if you don't have those tools, and get those tools because those tools are more effective. But if you don't have those tools. Feel free to try, but probably not going to work. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask, ask Wordy. How does the, the pure egoist or the pure individualist or whatever fight back against this, you know, huge mega machine, Kai and I, like we've been, Kai's been telling me about, like, how do you fight back against that only by yourself? Like, like you... There has to be a point at which, like, yeah, I, like I'm, 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 I don't, I'm on Ghosty side on this one now. Like, I don't. You need an affinity group. You need something. Like the affinity group is like the smallest mode. I mean, the affinity group is, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, five to nine people or some small arbitrary number of, of like people who organize collectively. Like, what do you? I mean, what what answer do you want to that? Feel free to Ruby Ridge yourself, I guess. Like, call upon our Lord and Savior Cthulhu, says Vri Cosplays. Yeah, like, I don't, what, what, what is the, what's the other option that you're looking for? What is your point? Like, don't, yeah, I, don't put I, it I, into I was, a question. What is the statement? Because even I'm lost at that point. Like you don't. What other options are there? Hey, Crimson. I felt like I was being read out of context, but yeah. I mean, crawl. We literally walked through how to build the tools. Like, we've been at this for. I'll say. For, oh no, because we started this straight. No, we've been at this for nearly an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, because this is new stream. Fucking yeah, my actual timer down there is this conversation at this point. So, like, yeah, this is, <laughs> we've been there, as we, and Wordy was here for it, so I don't, yeah, I, I want to know the statement. Like, like, outside of, feel free to try, it's not going to go well. It's actually a good, um... Like, I, I guess it's relevant, but Crawl also was, uh, where did Crawl say it? Like, how do we build the tools? I mean, I guess, you know, a lot of it you can read from, like, Gelderloose. Like, I've read, like, a little bit of Gelderloose, but that's a good question. It, it, like this, this, is, this isn't that complicated. It isn't that complicated. It, Nobody it, needs to read anything. You want to know how you do it? You do it by doing what Ghosty and I are doing right here. You have a conversation. It... it, it what is the foundation of every good relationship? Communication. If you don't communicate in your relationship, what happens? It falls apart. Communicate. Um, okay, we have a, a paragraph. 
Yeah, talk to a neighbor, talk to a friend, talk to a family member. You got to you got to talk to somebody. Communicate. Um <clears throat> What my issue is within the context of this conversation is that Ghost has been emphasizing that method. And what I was frustrated frustrated was that uh, by an overemphasis of that, it proposes that the ideal without having dealt with that, most people don't have that available. I'll acknowledge it was resolved, but it's, it was my frustration that instead of initially acknowledging, it was almost a flexion to that. Okay. Okay, so uh, from what I'm reading, Wordy was just merely perturbed by your uh, social uh, communal ways. Yeah. And they weren't at the time tempered with enough individualism. I, I As I'm interpreting that. Yes, but I've been, you know, like I had said, I had moved more towards the, the individual pers- uh, perspective, like reading a little bit of Sterner. And I like his... I haven't, well, I haven't read a ton, but I like his conception of the self. I like his idea of the unique, of Eichenheit, of the creative nothing, you know, that you don't have to be something that you, you're just this creative nothing that can, you know, be anything, which I, I think is, is a really good way, I guess, not bridging the gap, but if you think of like these old 19th century anarchists like Bakunin, you know, deeply anti-Semitic doesn't care about, doesn't respect identities, you know, the, the bigotry, the racism, the homophobia, the everything, right? Sterner's idea of the unique is blows through all that because it says, I'm a unique, I'm allowed to be who I am, who I want to be and who I am. Even if that is a sociopath who makes his own wife cry. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe he was a not horrible that, man. But. He was a horrible man, but, um, but like, yes, it actually does. Like individualist uh, philosophy d- does away with a lot of that sort of nonsense. It's like, dude, they have a right to be whoever they are just as much as you have a right to be whoever the fuck you are. Shut the fuck up about it. That's why it's actually very valuable. And that's why you'll see, um, oh my, uh, like the biggest shitter of all time, Caleb Malpin, who had like a meltdown stream and was like transphobic or whatever. But it's like, this is why you'll actually see a, like, you'll see a lot of the, like the Soviet union and the LGBT community. Right. It's like that whole thing is like, they don't respect it because they don't care. Right. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, well, I don't know. Sterner was legitimately a terrible person. <laughs> um, Cat said, for my main objection was more so that the initial convo felt like Ghost was discounting the value of self-defense on the individual level and on some level was creating a dichotomy between social and individualist methods or, in other words, was making the case for that individual praxis takes away from social organization. Well, I guess I, I didn't mean to frame it like that because obviously, you know, I was making the point that obviously like a direct... Self, like a violent self-defense is not, like if you're being attacked by a murderer or something, or if you're in Rojava and you're fighting ISIS, like, you know, obviously, well, that's not actually, that's not individualist, but it's a violent self-defense, but not an individualist. But I mean, you know, I, I know that it has its place, but it's just like, I, I think if you guys were rooting your examples in a Western North American set of ideals, then I can't imagine Ghosty arriving at any other conclusion than that individual defense outside of somebody breaking into your fucking house, right? Like, look, you get you get mugged, you get a home invasion going, anything like that. Yeah, 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 handle your business. But, like, if the state comes after you as an individual... You're screwed. You're fucked. Like, you're just fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked, fucked. Like, how many of you are, like, army rangers with, like, full-on survival skills that you can just disappear into this world with? Like, if the state comes after you as an individual, you're fucked. I mean, that's what's that going to look like? Eight-hour standoff that ends in exactly how we know it ends up in? Right? Like, I... I yeah. 
I don't like if that's I I don't know like what exa- like if the if you guys were going with like the sort of the state action against the individual like where were your examples rooted in because ultimately like yeah and more so to I guess another part of the conversation with Cat the point is in other words just making the case that individual practice takes away from the social organization well the point is in my idea of, of organization with consensus and um, mutual like free association. The whole point is you don't have to participate if you don't want to, because there would be, I envision no state. And then I also envision no private capital forces to force you to do anything. So I don't see the idea where like a social anarchism and like an egoism or individualism necessarily disagree because no one wants to like, like, I don't, I, I don't I don't envision a like a society or like an ANCOM or structural ANCOM society where you're gonna force yeah, I know it's funny, where you're gonna like force the individual to like like I'm gonna force you to be an anarcho communist instead of an egoist. Like, no, you can do whatever you want. Like like I know I can't you know, there's no conception of trying of an ANCOM trying to force you to not be an egoist. Like mandatory consensus meeting. Or mandatory mutual aid, like I just, I just don't get it. I don't know. I'm reading some of these messages, Cat. I just don't read them that way. I like the copy pasta in chat. That yeah, was that's Aka solid copy pasta. <laughs> Yeah, I agreed. I, I just said we had two kind of different frameworks of looking at it. I think, I mean, again, like as I'm reading through this, um, Ghosty's already like, yeah, like all of your points have been addressed. Like, okay, like I don't understand why you two have any questions at this point, given the conversation that we've just had. And, like, the furtherance of Ghosty saying, like, yeah, I've read some Sterner. It makes sense. Yeah, the individual. Like, again, you, that may have been at that point, but I don't see it now. Now, unless there's any rollback and tomorrow Ghosty starts posting, like, you know, like, oh, well, fuck yeah. the individualists. Don't. Like, I, do, I don't see the point anymore. Yeah, unless I change my profile pic to glorious um, un- Uncle Ho Chi Minh or whatever. Uh, EJ. Um, it's I, feel like, the- I feel like we agree more than we disagree. So it's like, I don't... Yeah. It's because they're egoists, says <laughs> Dig. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I, 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 w- I was thinking about it you know, before coming on, I never, I think it, I think since the, the ideological family of anarchism mostly represents a civilized group of people that wants to respect each other's autonomy and work together and, and make the world better. I don't think, I don't think it's like a debate. I think it's just a conversation. I think a debate is something the anarchist has with the fascist or with the hyper capitalist or with the the ML or whatever, right? Um, I have mixed feelings on that, but either way, um, yeah, no, I I, I think ground was covered. I think, you know, I I yeah, like you 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 now understand why the individual is important, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the whole, that was the whole arc. Like, from from if you if you want want more lore, it's like from from watching the Young Turks to Kyle Kalinsky to Hassan to Hakim, then going away from Hakim, going to Vosh, then watching Andrewism, Anarch, I'm trying to think of some other that dang bad, Kai, and like that side of the world. So yeah, it's okay, Wordy. Yeah. 
Anarch engages in some uh, denial of sections of anarchism that is uh, <clears throat> counterproductive, in my opinion. Oh? Post-leftism, yeah, the individualist schools with a focus on communalism. Well, well, you know, whatever. I mean, I mean, it's my YouTube. It's not, fine. not whatever, but just, that's just, I watch a bunch of people for lore. So whatever, so not lore. It just, that's you know, I just had to say the criticism. Um, but like also he's super fucking dry. Holy shit. It's my biggest issue. Um, yeah, I, I like him, but he's a, he's, he's very dry. Fuck. Bro, could you modulate your voice a little bit? Um, but yeah, oh yeah, if I, either way, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's about holistic anarchism. It's about recognition that the empowerment of the social group is achieved through the empowerment of the individuals. And uh, to not deny either side of it, to recognize that humans need the group and they need their individuality. And the way the group, the way the group flourishes, we already recognize this in genetics. Biodiversity is super important. Inbreeding breeds problems, right? And so you have yeah. to have that diversity of thought as well. And that's where the individualism comes into play is that sort of like, yeah, like somebody's going to, you know, and it should be a living, breathing. It should be uh, a dynamic form because that's, that's, that was what caused the, the downfall of communism more than anything else was people's needs evolved People's needs shifted from this to that, and they weren't equipped to address it. And capitalism just simply came in and said, we got a market for that. You want to buy it? And people just switched. It was a very easy sale. So, yeah, yeah, the, like it, it, we need to embrace that dynamism, a uh, dynamism that anarchism can bring. We need to embrace that, that evolutionary process that comes through individuals. It comes through single people going to a group of people and going, I think I had an idea. <laughs> can we try it? Yeah. And being able to work on a microcosmic scale at a grassroots level, which allows for experimentation in mass rather than a monolithic system that is governed from top down and centralizing authoritarian cent uh, cent uh, figures that doesn't yeah. allow for experimentation. That doesn't allow for customization. That doesn't allow for dynamism. Yeah. They're, they're less efficient anyways. And they're, and they're deeply, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You, you know what I mean? Yep. So. Uh, you're good, man. It's important to question. What is Wordy asking? I, I don't, yeah, no. I, I, either way, oh. crawl. It's almost like I had an entire section in this conversation about just make a san how just making sandwiches is important. And that discussion of the further stages leads to problematic anal uh, paralysis, analysis paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like I've addressed that, like, for you all, a while. Every conversation, like, any converse, like, of all yours on YouTube, like, you always talk, you always say, make a sound. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost yeah. like that's a better, huge talking point, actually. <laughs> yeah. And Wordy, I'm not in Twitch chat. I'm not in Twitch chat because my login just isn't working. So I'm only, mostly only on the Discord. And I watch on YouTube. But I can still watch on Twitch. I'm just not in the chat. Um, you need to fix your Twitch shit. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know. I don't know why that doesn't work. It just doesn't like 
Google. It doesn't like Chrome, I guess. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd blow out the installation and do a new one, but that's me. Um, fucking <laughs> wordy. Uh, all right. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll post the combo. I think it, I think it's good. Firefox gang. <laughs> um, yeah. so is, Firefox. is there anything you else? Uh, if, is there anything else you? Uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about or ask me or discuss or po- um, poke? No, that was uh, flip over? that was kind of the whole like meat and potatoes of it. And it's like it's like yeah. I mean, I'll probably you know like they're gonna be on. They're gonna be like the more egoist crowd, and I'm gonna be on the more like and commie crowd or whatever. But I mean, the point is that we just, we respect both the individual. We respect both the individual and the group. And then obviously we can, we can still work together. You know, you like different breeds of anarchists can do praxis with each other, but I'm never going to do praxis with the right libertarian or, or the deeply embedded Maoist, you know, Maoist thought guy. Like we're not going to, like I'm gonna stick to this crowd, obviously. All right. Well, then. Yeah. Um, cool. Good combo. Nice. Sweet. Good talk. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for talking with me. Yep. All right, man. I'll catch you later. All right. See you.